What's up, it's Aaron. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the strategies that I have implemented to help me drastically increase the number of shed antlers I find. Before we jump in, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to my channel and like this video. To set proper expectations, shed hunting is hard. The saying goes, miles for piles, but really it's like miles and miles for one, maybe two antlers, unless you're on some crazy fantasy farm. This was perfectly depicted by my buddy Dylan. Wow, it kinda sounds like finding a needle in a haystack. It's like trying to find a needle in a million haystacks. I say all of this to tell you that there are strategies that you can follow to find more antlers, and I'm gonna share some of those tips with you today. Tip number one is to wait. Maximize your efforts until a high percentage of bucks have dropped their antlers. In almost all cases, shed hunting is an odds game, and the more antlers on the ground, the higher the odds are of you stumbling across one of them. You can monitor this through trail camera data, through general observation, or shining at night if it's legal in your area. Across the Midwest, bucks are gonna drop their antlers sometime between February in March. If you're in a real northern area, it might be more January, February, and that's just a rule of thumb. Bucks, even in the same geographic area, are going to vary drastically when they drop their antlers. The strategy behind this varies a little bit if we're talking public land versus private land. If it's private land, you're going to want to wait till the later end of that range, so that way more bucks have dropped antlers and you don't risk pushing the remaining bucks that still have antlers on their head off of your land onto the neighbors. A lot of people go in too early, they get excited, they get eager, they have FOMO because they see everybody on social media picking up antlers across the country and they go in and scare these bucks off of their property and those deer end up dropping their antlers on their neighbors. So stay out until the later end of that if shed hunting is truly your goal. If you just want to go in there and get your off-season scouting done as early as possible, then get in there whenever you want. If you're on public land, this tip is a lot less critical and I would go early and often as you're probably gonna have a lot more shed hunting competition than you expect. Tip number two is to focus in food sources. While shed hunting, you wanna spend the majority of your time in the highest odds locations. And typically, in winter and early spring, the deer are gonna be stacked up in whatever food sources are still available to them. It's a scarce resource, so find whether it's a green field, whether there's still standing grain, a cut field that has a lot of waste grain in it still. There are gonna be pockets of food and deer are just gonna be stacked up in those areas and could be a very, very good place to find sheds. If you're in non-ag areas, look for clear cuts, look for pockets of red osier dogwood if it's a swampy area, look for green briar in the hills, but whatever the native browses in your area that's still available to them in that area, that's what they're gonna be focused on. So if you can identify what those areas are, it's a great place to find shed antlers. Tip number three is to look in bedding areas. Multiple times in the last couple of years, I've been doing my off season scouting while shed hunting a little bit, and I'll find a melted out bed in the snow with a shed antler laying right next to it. If you think about where deer spend a lot of their time, it's in the bedding areas. They might not lay in one spot all day long. They're gonna get up, they're gonna mill around, but a lot of time is spent there. And just from straight statistics standpoint, a lot of time spent in one area is a great place for them to drop their antlers. A lot of times in the winter, deer are seeking thermal cover. So if there's a stand of conifers, especially adjacent to a food source, that could be a great place for them to bed. Another great place to look, especially if you're in a hilly terrain, is south-facing slopes. Those south-facing areas get a lot more sunlight this time of year. They're on the leeward side. A lot of times in the winter, there's a north wind when it's really frigid cold. So they're gonna bed on that south side to get as much warmth as they possibly can. Tip number four is to check the travel routes between bedding and food. And I already know what you're thinking. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Check the bedding, check the food, check everywhere in between. Heck, might as well just check everywhere a deer has ever been. In the winter, bucks are extremely patternable, especially if there's a good food source with secure bedding nearby. They're gonna be making that journey back and forth between the two every single day. So it's worth taking some extra time walking up and down each one of those trails and try to find any antlers that might be shaken loose on their way after they get up from bed. Tip number five is to slow down. You wanna walk way slower than you think you should and let your eyes do a lot of the work. If you're staring straight down at your feet, walking as fast as possible. Sure, you might cover more ground, but by letting your eyes scan the entire area around you, you're gonna cover way more ground than you would if you're just hyper-focused on what's at your feet. In addition to that, this time of year, everything in the woods is dead and brown, kind of like antler color. So if you're walking too fast, you're gonna blow right by a lot of sheds. Number six is to bring a pair of binoculars. Good glass is gonna save you a ton of walking. It can save you a 100-yard walk across the field to determine it whether you're seeing a shed antler or just the tip of a corn stalk, it's gonna help you scan short fields a lot quicker. You're gonna be able to cover a lot of ground with your eyes instead of having to take the time to walk all of that. And that's gonna roll us right into tip number seven, which is to look for parts of antlers. You're not always gonna have a giant antler laying on the wide open, 
tines up for you to be able to see. So a lot of times you're gonna be seeing just a tip of a tine covered in long grass, or maybe you'll see just a base, but you're gonna have to be able to focus on seeing less of an antler and determining that it is indeed a shed versus just expecting to see a giant antler laying out there in the wide open. So that is why you wanna move slow, scan with your eyes, have good binoculars. Sometimes if you might be 50 yards away, think you might see a tip of a tine, be able to see with your binoculars that it's just a stick. These things all kind of roll into each other, but you wanna train your eyes to focus on seeing something smaller and focus on that and then the big ones like this are gonna stick out like a sore thumb. Focus on the small ones, focus on seeing bits and pieces of an antler, and you're gonna have a lot more success shed hunting. Tip number eight is to bring a shed with you. That way, if you see somebody out there on the trail, they think you know what you're doing because you already found one. Just kidding, that's not the purpose behind it. Especially if you're with a partner or with somebody else, you can take turns tossing that antler out there 10 or 15 yards, and the other person turn around and close their eyes. And then that person's gotta to try to find the antler knowing that it's 10 yards in front of them, 15 yards in front of them. And it's amazing how difficult it still is. But what that's gonna do, it's gonna help train your eye, get you used to recognizing antlers in the debris, and you're gonna have a lot more success finding new antlers once you're out there. It's amazing, even the person that tosses the antler out there sometimes might lose track of it. And all of a sudden you got two guys out there trying to find this antler so you don't come back negative one shed on the trip. Tip number nine is to get other people involved. Bring a buddy. Bring a group of friends, bring your family, bring your kids. It can be a great way to get new people into the outdoors and have a lot of fun after being cooped up all winter long. And the more people that you have out there, the less chance of you missing antlers because you're gonna have more people covering ground. Tip number 10 is to make sure you're doing your off-season scouting while you're out there. Pay attention to the rubs, pay attention to any scrapes you find. If you find pockets of bedding area, Mark those down. Use a good app like Onnex so you can have all of that stuff documented. And that way when you go to hunt next year in the fall, you have all these waypoints already put in place and you can be a lot more effective when you come to game plan for hunting season. If scouting is something new to you, check out these videos here. They're gonna help you figure out what to look for, what it means, and how you can apply it to make sure you have the best hunting season you've ever had next fall. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Like this video and I'll see you in the next video.